Now, what happens when soldiers embrace politics? Do you do you feel that you have to leave behind uh, some of the things that you were you were obviously molded in when you were in the forge? For example, at the rally, you spoke very strongly about Pakistan. Now, obviously, that is your training as a soldier. But if you were to come into mainstream politics, you'd have to factor in all kinds of other things. So, when you say Modi gets elected and Pakistan gives Kashmir the evil eye, then Kashmir will exist, but Pakistan won't. Now, rhetorically, that's that's a soldier speaking. But should it be a politician speaking? They, uh, you have to understand when I speak to soldiers yeah. and they were all ex-servicemen they were soldiers there they want to see a young man a vibrant an ex-soldier an officer who can take command of the situation speaking so I was appealing to their heart yet what I was what I was intending and what is always the intention when you're when you're discussing at a, at a table is that it's the it's the organizations within the Pakistan that are actually orchestrating the terrorism. Mm. They need to be wiped out, and mm. there's no second thoughts about it. Pakistan is a is an independent country, and India would want Pakistan to become stronger. I mean, we we need to perhaps reach a stage where we collaborate, where we support them financially or or help them with their trade, and and they along with us uh, help the Indian Army to wipe out their terrorist bases. That has to happen at some point or the time or the other. Pakistan itself is suffering. So the intent was was directed towards the the uh, the nests, the safe heaven, heavens of the terrorist activities there, not the state of Pakistan itself. Uh, and we have fantastic relations at the diplomatic as well as sorry, not the diplomatic, but the people's level. Yeah, people to people contact. Yeah. Now I want to ask you in the end that you've said that it's great that ex servicemen and the soldiers are finally in political focus. Now you've obviously chosen to affiliate yourself with the BJP, but you're you're a soldier before you're a politician, at least right now. Uh, this time, if other politicians also start reaching out to the soldiers' community, I think we've seen Arvind Kejriwal, for example, talk about it in Delhi. Tomorrow, if Rahul Gandhi were to address an ex-servicemen's rally, being a soldier, would you support that as well? Despite the fact that you've chosen a political party, what are you first, a soldier or a politician? Are you, are you, this question, is it directed to me as a, as a politician now or as a soldier? What are you first? What is your first identity? I'm a soldier for the nation and uh, perhaps the nation now needs uh, political soldiers and therefore I would answer as a politician right now. Would you support any politician even if they're your political opponents reaching out to your community? No, I, mean, I would support. In any case, we want politicians to go out and reach to this community which is uh, a highly disciplined force uh, and ready to sacrifice uh, much of their family life for the good of the country. I, I would uh, actually support any politician who goes and speaks. But who has spoken till now? No one, absolutely no one. This is the first time that somebody has remembered an organization like the Indian Army. In the end, are you nervous about making this change? Uh, from the inside, yes. It's, uh, it's a very different world there. Uh, many, many things for me to learn. Quite different from my natural uh, trait and instinct and character. But I, I feel at the end, of, I've always lived by this, this philosophy that at the end of the life, I should be able to turn back and say, I'm proud of that life. And uh, if I can do that, I'll perhaps have lived this life uh, with, with, um, uh, with full content. Well, it could be said that if you can be a soldier, you can do almost anything else in life. So thank you so much, Colonel Rajivadhar Nathur, for talking thank, to thank us. Thank you so much.